What up, nerds? It's your boy, some dumb kid who's not even really a kid anymore. Yeah, that's right. High school is officially done, so my dudes, and I am no longer some dumb kid. Oh no, I am now and forever will be some stupid idiot. Yeah, that should that should somehow imply that I'm now over the age of 18 and I'm no longer a kid, even though the words stupid and idiot are not necessarily exclusive to adults necessarily, but oh, who cares? Someone call Huggies because I'm a big kid now! I'm a big kid now. So I apologize for the state of my room right now. I am currently in the process of packing up for college that's going to be in good old sunny Chicago where it's not sunny at all and I'll either die of frostbite or gunshot wounds. I don't know what yet. But that's not important right now though. Summer has officially gone by and with summer a bunch of new movies have gone by and I'm going to give you a recap of every single one of them that I saw of the summer of 2017. So without further ado, let's get started. Oh yeah, since I'm not, I'm not in uh, Catholic high school anymore, I can say words like and and Ooh, you kiss your mother with that mouth? King Arthur Legend of the Sword. I was actually kind of interested in this one, seeing as how it was being directed by Guy Ritchie, who's a director that I really like. He has an incredibly unique style of filmmaking that for the most part feels cool and exciting rather than tedious and irritating. I really enjoyed a lot of the movies that he's made, including Snatch and Lock, Stock and Barrel, but I absolutely loved what he did with the Sherlock Holmes franchise. So when I heard he was making a movie about King Arthur, I was intrigued. So how was it? It was... Eh, it's not flat out awful, but I wouldn't call it great either. There were a lot of things in this movie that I really liked. For example, the acting across the board was overall really good. Charlie Hunnam was absolutely perfect as King Arthur. He's very charming and very charismatic. And Jude Law just completely chews up all the scenery as the evil King Vortigan. Also, as with pretty much all of Guy Ritchie's movies, the editing and cinematography is absolutely phenomenal. It's quick, it's exciting, and it's incredibly creative. The soundtrack also complements the very fast pace of the film very well. That being said, where the movie struggles is in its story and in its characters. You see, the majority of the movie is told through flashbacks or someone telling a story and then seeing clips of that story unfold as he's telling it. Sometimes this works very well, other times it just makes the movie unnecessarily confusing. Also, while I said the actors themselves did a very good job, the characters they're portraying don't really feel like they're used to their full potential. There are so many parts where they introduce aspects of these characters that could potentially be very interesting, but the movie never really explores them in a meaningful way. Lastly, the action scenes are really disappointing. While they're set up well in scale and concept, the actual action scenes have a huge reliance on CGI, and it can really take you out of the experience. This is such a shame considering how well choreographed and well filmed the action was in the Sherlock Holmes movies. I mean that bare knuckle boxing fight match alone is one of the most inventive and one of the coolest action scenes I've seen in quite some time. That was awesome. <laughs> so yeah, while it's not flat out bad, I don't really see myself watching King Arthur again anytime soon. Also, David Beckham. Why? Just why? Why, why, why is he here? Why is David Beckham in your movie? Why, 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 why? Alien Covenant. Ha! <sighs> Okay, so I'm going to get into some mild spoilers here, because I think I have to in order to fully explain how this movie just completely pissed me off. Not that the movie is necessarily bad, oh no. It's just that this movie is the most infuriatingly confusing film since the previous infuriatingly confusing Alien prequel. Now don't get me wrong, I love me some Alien. Well, as long as it's the first two. Alien 3 is just boring, and Alien Resurrection is almost so bad it's funny. This is a really good show, man. It's from the Gut Cutters Celebration Collection, makers of Premier Knives and Edgeware. The knife is Well, let's talk about 
about Prometheus for a second. If you look at it as a prequel to Alien, it makes little to no sense. But if you look at it as a standalone sci-fi horror film, it's really not that bad. It's not perfect, but it's a solid movie overall. And then we get to Alien Covenant, a movie that is so breathtakingly beautiful, with such phenomenal special effects that completely gets undermined by stupid characters and a storyline that completely overcomplicates the Alien universe. The characters in this movie, while portrayed by very good actors, make the dumbest decisions that wind up getting themselves or everyone around them killed. The only characters in this movie that aren't complete idiots and are actually somewhat interesting are Michael Fassbender's characters. David and Walter have a great dynamic, and they are played perfectly by Fassbender. That being said, David is just creepy for the sake of being creepy at certain points. Watch me. I'll do the fingering. Oh! That was the grossest thing I've ever heard in my life! Also, the movie's advertising at first I thought was really good, but really it wound up hurting the movie for two reasons. The first is the actual showing of the alien. At first I was like, oh wow, they're really not showing a lot of the alien in the trailers, that's really good. But the thing is, the alien really isn't in the movie all that much. So the scenes you see in the trailer are the exact scenes you see him in the movie, so it's kind of hard to be scared when I knew he was going to show up in each of those scenes. Secondly, the movie released two short films, which I assumed were supposed to act as prequels to the movie, and I thought that was a really cool idea. But the thing is, these two shorts aren't in the actual movie, yet they contain vital, necessary information for the overall plot of the film. So if you haven't seen these two short films, which the majority of mainstream audiences haven't, then you're going to be incredibly confused. But let me just sum up how complex this movie is by giving you the movie's explanation for the origin of the Xenomorph, which is basically the point of Covenant and Prometheus. Are you ready? No you're not. Here we go! So apparently the basis for where the xenomorphs that we all know and love from the original films come from is this black goo that David found in Prometheus, which the engineers had a bunch of on the ship that David eventually takes to the engineers' homeworld in Alien Covenant. This black goo creates this little like snake-like facehugger thing and then creates a bigger facehugger thing and when it infects you, a thing that looks like a xenomorph but isn't really a xenomorph comes out of you but it's actually called a deacon? A deacon, I guess, for some reason? Why it doesn't have Morph at the end of its name, I don't really know, and neither of the two movies really explain it. Anyways, this stuff was on the ship because the one engineer that we see in Prometheus was going to take it to Earth and bomb the shit out of it with this black goo stuff. Even though we never really find out why he wanted to do this in the first place, or why'd they do it if they created humans in the first place. And of course we'll never know why, because David bombed the shit out of them before he could get any meaningful information about who the engineers were, or what they were doing, or what their intentions were. But the thing is, when David bombs the sh** out of the engineers, they don't really become infected with aliens in their stomach, but they kind of just shrivel up and get burned or something, like it's Pompeii or something like that? Why would that happen? Why does the goo impregnate you with aliens one second, but then just incinerate you in another? And I think this black goo comes from these spore things that we see in Alien Covenant. The movie never explicitly says that, but I think it's implied because when these spores get in people, it creates this thing that looks like a xenomorph, but it isn't really a xenomorph, and it's like tiny and white. And apparently this thing is called a neomorph. And what's a neomorph? Is it just a smaller relative to a xenomorph? Maybe? Again, we never really know why or how or if the engineers harvested these things, because the movie never explains why! But now David is experimenting with the goo by using the dead body of the doctor who initially survived in Prometheus. Yeah, that's... That's a satisfying end to that kind of interesting character. And he uses her body and the goo or the spores or the... I don't even know anymore, to create the one and only Xenomorph. But it's still weird because when the chestburster comes out of the guy, he looks completely different than the chestburster that we see in the original Alien. And the facehugger also lays eggs and falls off the guy's face really quickly in this version, even though in the original Alien it took like several days for the facehugger to put all its eggs in the person. But don't worry, the movie actually gives a reason for this because guess what? Guess what? Apparently, the alien that we see in Alien Covenant isn't a xenomorph at all, oh no! Apparently, it is actually something called a protomorph. What? What the f*** is a protomorph?
xenomorph! It looks exactly like a xenomorph except a few minor things that are just stupid! Why did you make the journey to finding out what the hell these things are if you're going to make it so complex to the point where you would even give Christopher Nolan an aneurysm? I just, I don't, I don't understand! Loud noises! Oh, okay, yeah. That hurt my throat. But seriously, at the end of the day, Alien Covenant and Prometheus are trying to ask the question, where did the xenomorphs come from? But is that really a question that we want answered? Doesn't not knowing where the aliens came from make them that much scarier? It kind of makes these movies not worth watching if they're just trying to answer a question that a lot of fans don't want answered in the first place. So I think you get the idea. I've ranted about this movie long enough. I think you get the idea about where I stand on it. And... Just... No, oh, Ridley Scott, what did you do?! Oh my f***ing god, she f***ing dead.